looking at the last of the battle rifles today with the Classic Army M14 match. So here it is up close, the M14 match from Classic Army. As you can see, it is a nice picture of walnut on plastic. Uh, the gun is heavy as it is. It's about eight and a half pounds with BBs and a battery. It's probably going to be up around 10. So uh, not really for the little guys. And, you know, it's a big gun nonetheless, too, you know, as being a, a battle rifle. So, you know, a picture of walnut doesn't look too bad. It looks better than uh, some of the Chinese real wood stuff I've seen. This is plastic on the early M14s. It, some of them had wood, but later on they switched to plastic for the uh, heat guard, hand guard, um, usually brown or black. And this gun is available, I believe, in olive drab and black as well from Classic Army. And you can get a wood stock from Classic Army, but um, we usually carry the wood G&G M14. And these are both there, it's compatible with the uh, Classic Army. The uh, G&G and Classic Army mag, um, M14s um, they came out, well, the G&G came out before the Tokyo Maori. And the Tokyo Maori is the same as the, the CART and the uh, Echo One and the Saima um, M14. So there, there's some differences that I'll point out in a little bit. But let's look at the back here. Get your shoulder rest. Where your cleaning kit would go is where the battery goes. Uh, literature says you can fit an 8.4 mini, 8.4 uh, large type, excuse me, in there. large type connector um, so but you know those come off put Dean's on it whatever um, silicon coated wire uh, looks to be about 16 gauge could be 18 but it's probably about 16 being this thick I think the fuse is 25 amps let's push that back in there so we have Sling loop in the back. Got some trades right here. Got the M14 uh, 7.62 millimeter, which is 308, you know, Winchester. Um, Springfield Armory, which is where they made these. A couple of the companies made these as well. Um, Winchester and Harrington or Richardson, and I think TRW as well. But Springfield Armory, before it, it got licensed to be uh, uh, Springfield, Ar Springfield Armory, was a uh, it's a federal armory out in uh, Springfield, Mass. And they made uh, you know, guns going back to like the 1700s, you know, and uh, up until I think 1970 or 1969. Um, but you'll see it at Springfield Armory stamped on a lot of different guns. Um, that's where they were built. Um, it's sort of in that same area where uh, Winchester and Smith and Wesson are out in Springfield, Massachusetts. But, you know, authentic trades. Um, serial numbers are unique. Every gun will have a unique serial number. Um, the new Springfield Armory, uh, I believe in the 70s, a uh, company in Illinois licensed the name, and they make the M1A, which is an M14 for civilian use. It's it's uh, semi-auto only, and that, they make some other guns too. I think they make a 1911 and all that as well. There's also some trades up here underneath the scope mount, some uh, foundry stampings. They got the mount, so if you wanted to make an M21, a more modern uh, DMR variant. You can get the, uh, the scope mount for that. And right here we have adjustable for windage and elevation. Wow, that is tight. So, so elevation, windage. That is really tight. This thing's brand new. That's a wear in, but that's really tight. So, adjust the hop off. This is one of the differences between this and a uh, gun based on the Maori design. Basically, got to hold down the uh, bolt catch right over here. Back, and right up here you have your your hop up. Uh, it's a metal hop up on this, so it's nice and durable. Um, I believe that's new on this run from Classic Army. Uh, the gearbox, it's a version seven, but it's the G and G Classic Army um, M14 version seven, so it's different than the Maori ones. Um, it will take standard version two, version three gears. Um, but there's you know some slight differences you know short type motor this has seven millimeter uh, bushings in it um, so it should be pretty rugged and dependable so instead of pushing this button right here for the uh, it's pretty much a mag I mean a bolt catch it's not really a release you just pull back and slam your fingers up there 
But, so we got Classic Army on that side too. Here we have the safety. The safety is just like M M1 Garand. You know, it's fire. It's safe. Mag release. Mag holds uh, 470 rounds. It's a high cap. Might take a little bit of use to get, to get used to this. Um, it's not as positive as my SA58, which you put the mags in so easily, or uh, the AKs. They go in real easy, but with some practice, you can, you can get pretty good at switching these, especially if you start using mid caps on this. This nicely segues into one of the differences between this and the Tokyo Maori style. So, you see, we got a little notch in the corner there. Tokyo Maori style, this is actually a Saima mag. Uh, it does not. The little lip in the back, different heights. Um, the Classic Army is an Audi, this is an Innie. These are different, the little, uh, where it catches the pin in the front. So they're just, they're totally not compatible. Um, if you get the wrong mags, you're going to have a bad time. So if you got a G and G or a Classic Army, make sure you get the ones with the notch. If you got a Mar if you got a Token Maori or a Saima or a, a Card or an Echo One, get the ones without the notch. I'm using 0.2 gram BBs in a 9.6 battery that's almost dead. It's the only large type battery I had and uh, I don't have time to charge it. So that's pretty decent. Uh, 416, that's good for outdoor fields up here where uh, it's um, 400 with two fives. So if you subtract about 30 FPS from that, you're well under 400. And this isn't going to really matter much because it's dead, but here's the rate of fire. Like I said, this battery is pretty much uh, pretty much dead. So 613 on a low 9.6. If you're looking for a field gun, that's not common, but it's quite familiar. Everyone knows what the M14 is. You know, it's on another M4 or AK or G36. Give the M14 match a good look. It's got good performance, just under 420 feet per second. Good internals. It's got the uh, Classic Army Proline gearbox, even though it's priced almost like a Sportline at two hundred and thirty dollars. Um, if it was walnut, it would probably be up around four hundred dollars, um, like the, the G and G walnut stock one is. Classic Army actually has a walnut stock option. They don't sell the gun with the walnut stock. You can get it in walnut, olive drab, or black, uh, you know, plastic. But it's nice and durable. It's a uh, it's a good performer. So if you like this or any of the other awesome guns we got here at Master Hobbies, stop on by. We're at 565 Main Street in Cherry Valley, Massachusetts. You can find us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash masterhobbies.